All right. Good morning again, everyone. Uh, today we're back. I want to show you the templating engine that we added to the REST output in, uh, in HiByte. So you can take our default JSON output and you can change it into whatever you want, XML, you name it. And the way I'll demo that is I'm actually going to use InfluxDB uh, to push data from HiByte to Influx. So let's jump uh, jump right in. So I've got I've got an, an, a free Influx account. You can sign up uh, here. If you just Google, you'll find this. Uh, it's totally free. And the catch is you can create a single data bucket, which is kind of their database, uh, with a retention policy of 30 days. So you're limited in how much data you can put in. But let me show you uh, how we're going to communicate and push data to that. So the first thing, uh, let's just create a data source. So we'll use OPC as usual. And I'm going to go quick because this is in other videos. Uh, internal. We're just going to bring in a few tags. Uh, data type example, 16-bit. There we go. Let's just bring some D words. Cool. So we got some data in. Uh, and what we want to do is uh, we will create a simple model for this. So we're going to create a, we'll call it a press model. And we'll add a cycle, cycle count. Um, part count. Running minutes. And we're, we're going to be a little more diligent here. We're going to set these. Um, to a specific type. And we don't necessarily have to. But let's do it. And then I'm going to create, go to actions, create an instance of that model. I'm going to call it press. I'm just going to call it press one. And then we're going to fill it in, right? So we're just going to grab some randomly generated data to fill to fill in those, <coughs> those attributes. All right, cool. So now we got our model. Uh, what I always like to do is create a REST output to webhooks. So I can uh, see that model. Just make sure everything is is working. So create an out. And what, what we're really going to focus on is this this piece down here. So I'm going to do is, is put this in. And if you, it's there by default. <coughs> and this will output uh, Highbyte's default JSON output. But if you delete it, it'll do the same thing. So I'm not going to use the template engine to start. And I'm going to go turn on the flow. And I'm just going to map that model instance to my REST output and turn it on. And what we should see is the model, right? Psycho count part time. That's what we expect. So everything there is working. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to create another output. This time I'm going to call it influx. Oops. Influx. And it is using the REST client, right? The, the influx is a REST interface. And for the base URL, um, oh, let me just jump over to make sure I get this right. So the base URL looks like this for me. And this is based on the, the host region. But you can see you know, it kind of matches this, this base URL here on, on the website. So that's my base URL. And this uses token-based authentication. So what you do is I'm going to create a header, right? Um, authorization equal to token. And then the way I get the token in in here is I'm going to go to my tokens, so data tokens, and I can create one. And I have a test token that I'm going to use just for this. And there's one catch here. So this is the token. Now this has two equal signs in it, right? And this, you could use an and at the end to add multiple headers, but we have difficulty parsing that because we're using the equal sign to delineate you know, the name value pairs. So you need to th uh, URL encode this, which just turns out to be this. If we did it, and you can use any website, just go URL encode, you know, paste that token in, and you would get this. But this is the token to authenticate with um, Influx, and then I'll create an output. 
I'm going to call this high bite because that's the name of my bucket that I'm using in Influx. And let's, I've got a little cheat sheet over here. So I remember that the output URL looks like, oops, if I can copy it, looks like this. And this is the extension. So API version two, right? You name the bucket that you're writing into. In that case, um, my bucket is called high bite. And then precision is the precision of the timestamp that you're going to use on each data. Now, that by, by default, <coughs> high bite uses milliseconds. So this could be second, millisecond, et cetera, but, but we use millisecond. And the last piece is this. And I'm just going to leave this blank for now. Um, and then we'll come back to it. So what, what I'm going to do before is I'm going to, I'm going to jump in here and you'll remember that the default output here, the default JSON output looks like this. Now influx has something called a line protocol. And if you Google it, it looks kind of like this. So you have a measurement point, a uh, comma tag set. And then this is an example of what it looks like. And then, then each update is on its own line. So we need to mimic that format in HiByte to be able to send data. This would be the, the payload body. So to do that, we're going to use the, the template engine. And let me cheat again. Oops. My notepad over here. I'm just going to paste, paste what we want to use in here. And then kind of explain what it's doing. So... Oh, that's actually not exactly what we want. So we'll modify it in real time. So what we do is we pass a value class into this template engine. And what we're using behind the scene is, is a technology called um, Apache FreeMarker. And Apache FreeMarker is an open source tool, a templating engine, uh, used a lot for websites. So you can see even their initial example, we're going to take database data, uh, parameterize it, or allow you to, to, to build HTML based on the data from like a database dynamically. We're using it for, for JSON, which it's a, a very powerful tool to do that. So we pass a value object, and in our documentation, we'll explain the different um, attributes this exposes. But for example, when I use the dollar sign uh, in this syntax, this is saying this is a parameterized value that I want you to replace with data coming from HiByte. If I use the type, that's the, the model type definition. So in my case, this would be press, right? And then when I use name, and again, here's another parameter, value.name, that's the name of the instance. Right, in this case, press one. And then over here, we have a list. So this is an iteration. And we're going to say base elements is the attributes in the model. So for every attribute in the model, given its name and value pair, I'm going to output it as the name, the attribute name, equal to the attribute value. value. And then FreeMarker has a syntax at the end to say, if name has next, uh, I'm going to put a comma. If there's no next element, meaning I'm at the end of the list, no comma. And then value.time is the, the timestamp of the data. So let me save this and turn the flow on. And what we'll see is you'll see the difference between this is our standard JSON output. Now it's templatized, right? Here's the model name, the model instance. Here's all the, the model attributes. Um, and then here's the timestamp. And this syntax is pretty much what you see is what you get. So if I were to jump back in here to the output, you know, if I wanted to uh, all your base <laughs> does belong to us and save that, that text would just verbatim be uh, put in the output. You see, so you can decorate this, you know, I could, dec I, I could have a transform that transforms it into XML. I could rename attributes in the JSON field, leave stuff out. It's very flexible in terms of what you can do. And like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll publish the API, basically what accessors you have, um, from the value class, which you can get access to, and then uh, link to the documentation of Apache FreeMarker in terms of being able to do things like iterate arrays, all the logic you can do in there. That's an Apache FreeMarker uh, language around that. And FreeMarker actually has really good documentation. Um, it's probably the best I've ever seen, to be honest. So, so what we're gonna do, now that we've seen that in the REST output, we're gonna jump over to Influx. And we're going to paste that here. And I, th I don't think this is actually quite right. Uh, so we might see an error, but let's we'll fix it if we do. Uh, so now I'll go to Outputs, and I'll select Influx. 
and I'll drag that over. And now I'm going to output to both the rest output and the influx output at the same time. So the rest output's uh, still kicking. And I'm actually going to bring up uh, the event log because I feel like, yeah, failed to. So it's saying bad request on the influx flow. And I think the reason for that is my format isn't quite right. So if we jump into influx. So if we look at the, the line protocol, uh, I don't think, I think we have an extra space. So that's model name, uh, the name tag, and then space, the parameterized values. So I think if we look here, we have model model name, the name tag, and then we're using comma, the parameterized value. So I'm pretty sure if we just do this and say that, those bad request errors will go away. Yeah, they're, we're not seeing them anymore. So now if I jump, so I'm not getting any errors. So the absence of an error means success in a lot of cases. Uh, I'm going to jump over to the bucket. And I'm going to look for data. And it looks like it's here. So if I select the bucket, in my measurements, I have a press machine. Again, that's my model in high byte, right? So the way I've set this up, my model is press. And then um, here are my attributes, cycle count, park count, running. So I select those. And then here's my instance name, right? So if I had press machine 2, 3, 4, they'd, they'd appear here. But I can select that. And then if I hit submit, Past five minutes. Interesting. I'm not really seeing. Uh, the values are pretty large. I wonder. Oh, I think there's a big differential. Looks like the scale of the chart's a little messed up. There we go. If we select one, I think because these values are so different, if we try to show them on the same chart, maybe it's cycle count that's tripping it up. Yeah, they're just a few thousand off. Uh, but you can see, you know, and, and this is, I mean, I'm not an, an influx expert by, by any means, but, you know, there's gauges and there's different ways to build dashboards around this data now that it's in. And what's really cool about influx is um, it's super dynamic, right? Like it's, it's right, right in schema, I think they call it. So if I go into high bite as an example, and I create, um, let's just clone this instance. Call it press two. Um, we'll leave it. Just leave it with the same data. Um, but we could change the data mapping, right? Uh, and then what I do is I jump into here and I grab instances, press two, save it. What you'll see is like really fairly quickly. Um, If I did my job right, press two appears. And right now it has the same exact data, but you can see that you know I have a second instance uh, available immediately. Even cooler, right, if I go in and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm kind of in the initial stage messing around with my model. I want a you know an error count or something. And I'm gonna set that to in 32. Oops. In 32. So I'm, I'm going to dynamically add an attribute here, and I'm just going to fill it in for the different um, the two different. Um, so you, you see here, and now I have my flow is still running, right? I have I've done nothing. Uh, I did all that on the fly, and with with influx, pretty quickly you'll see the error count comes in too, right? So it's kind of, it's a fairly dynamic schema in order to update stuff on the fly. Um, but so this, but now I'm just showing off Influx. Influx is pretty cool. But the whole, the point of this is that we now have on the rest output, the ability to templatize your output, which means that you could build, you know, whatever you want here. And we'll, like, again, we'll publish the API documentation uh, to do this, but you could build XML, you could modify the, the output JSON that we have, you could mimic other formats. Uh, it's a pretty powerful tool. So hopefully that's helpful, and I'll uh, see you again soon.